Katie, nice job here. I'd like to suggest that you use a little eraser like the little pink eraser on the end of a yellow pencil to neaten up the outside edge of your apple. I love the way that we have a nice transition from um, uh, dark to light. It's very subtle, beautiful glows. Work on a cast shadow too. Take a look at the little video about drawing spheres. Gee, Craig, this is a tough subject. A lot of sweat went into the creation of what you've got here. So much dedication. Really lovely work and good lighting on your subject. I would suggest that at the base of the object on the table or surface where the object touches, that the cast shadow goes darker. We've got a quality of hovering here, and I think you can manage the cast shadow a little better. Again, I'm going to suggest taking a look at the video about drawing a sphere that may help here. Nadja, I would like to point out that you, Katie, and Craig have all selected subjects that are especially good for drawing owing to the fact that they're going to stay put and they're going to last through the drawing period. You can leave them still and get back to the drawing. One thing about yours, though, is that you've included this basket, which is kind of um, um, corralling the bananas, and that, I would say, is a man-made subject, which makes this a little harder. I want you to work on letting go of stressing edges. And squint your eyes so that you see shapes of value, and let no edge be darker than the shape of value that it surrounds. I want to mention something about materials and scale. You know, looking at not just drawing, it appears that it might be on newsprint, which is a paper not well suited to drawing with pencil. Use a white paper or maybe even a charcoal paper, as was suggested in the assignment. Also, I want to look at scale with both not just and Margie's. The writing on the page is suggesting to me that these drawings may be petite, and I want you to use your entire 8.5 by 11 page because that in itself is a small format. Now, Margie, I noticed that like Naja, you are clinging to edges. Mm. Let no edge be darker than the shape of value it's a part of, okay? And also, I'm trying to understand what your subject is. Is it a plant growing from the earth? If so, were you outside drawing this? Is it um, a leaf that's been plucked and set on the table? Bear in mind that cast shadow will help you create an environment for your work. Well, David, I think you can see that there are certain similarities between your composition and Nadja's and even Margie's. And I found this student drawing of bananas, too, which reminded me of what you guys are contending with. You know, David, there's a poignant quality to your subject. I mean, I can sense the texture. I like the fact that it's a little vicious seeming. In other words, it looks like it has prickers. It looks pointy, the leaves themselves are pointy in shape. I want to talk about the shape of the opening of the planter. Now, I'm imagining that this is the sort of planter that would look circular if you saw it from directly above. And if that's the case, you need a very narrow ellipse for the shape of the opening. Hi, Joe. I can see that you were able to achieve some velvety blacks. And, you know, I even wonder whether you may have used a little bit of rubbing, that is, um, placing a leaf underneath the paper and using graphite on its side to get a sense of the texture. Generally, that's not enough to make a drawing, but it's a good way to get one started. Now, I'm looking at a shadow cast by the big leaf in front, and it seems as though it quits just at the leaf's edge, and that seems odd. Also, I wonder if you could push the value sets a little further apart between the near leaf and the rear one that it overlaps. Hello, Tracy. You really wow us with that upper leaf. I like the way that the central sort of spine of the leaf uh, it seems to dip in. In other words, it creates a little valley. I can tell that happens because the way that you've managed the light and shadow on the halves on either side of it. Um, let's look at the object in the foreground. It's ambiguous. I'm not sure what it is, and that's not always a problem. However, I'm concentrating on 
the nearest part in what seems to be a cast shadow. And I feel as though the cast shadow's edge might be a little harsh. You might like to dissipate that shadow more so and even stress the very edge where we see the subject meeting the ground or uh, give us more detail on the subject and less on the shadow. Also, that horizon line should have a value above it or below it, no darker than the line itself. Well, Gretchen, you know, this is a, a lovely uh, idea, a complex subject, and even the angle you're viewing things from makes the complexity greater. You know, with a subject like this, I'd say a silk flower is your better bet versus a live one. And that goes from, you know, a variety of people who've chosen to work with leaves and flowers. It's very nice to be able to get back to your still life. It should be able to be placed to sit still, not to melt or wilt between a first drawing session and a second drawing session. So think about choices of subjects. I'd say here there could be more definition in leaves and even a wider range of values. Trevor, I like the contrast of the crinkly, what is it, a leaf in comparison to the beautiful arc of the stem here. A nice subject in placement. Um, with the shadow, Mm, the cast shadow, I feel as though the transition from uh, dark to light is a little choppy, and that's something that you could work on. Also, as I pointed out in a post in this assignment, mm, it's okay to let go of the edge where you see the value in your subject and background matching. Let go of the outline or the apparent edge. You know, Becky, even though it wasn't a requirement to include the value scale here on your drawing, I'm glad you did. And there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, um, you know, I can see that you did it. And second, you can compare your drawing to see that you're using a full range of values in the drawing itself. I love the soft quality of this image. Um, and it does feel delicate. Mm. I would say that maybe you can take a look at that short video about drawing a sphere and look at the portions where cast shadow is discussed. I think the place where your subject meets ground needs to be emphasized a little bit and there can be mm, uh, a more apparent edge there. Joshua, this is a lovely drawing, and you can see that it bears some resemblance to the sorts of subjects that some of your classmates are using. Um, I'm wondering, is this a drawing in graphite? In other words, are you drawing with a uh, pencil? The medium called for in this assignment is actually pencil, and the mark that you've drawn seems sort of big, and it's reminding me of charcoal, unless it's a pencil drawing on a very small scale. And, you know, I have encouraged people to work at the full size of the paper. I know you've cropped this somehow because your paper wouldn't be this proportion. You know, the idea of a flower, this looks like a spent flower, is, is very lovely. Pay attention to cast shadows and enable yourself to get involved in detail, in petals, in um, the actual texture of the stem, for example. This drawing looks like it wants more time.